Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. Today is May the 2nd, 2024. Let's talk about Canelo against Jaime Munguia, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I made a video on this fight already. It's dated... March the 4th, 2024. Give it a look. In that video, I made the case that I view Jaime Munguia as defensively challenged. I understand there are some who don't. Freddie Roach thinks his defense is fine. But I view Munguia as defensively challenged. I view Munguia as primarily a hooker. He doesn't throw straight punches. So an opponent who's defensively blessed, like Canelo, is going to know where the punches are coming from. There is a casino mispricing here. I'm expecting a stoppage. I understand some recent Canelo fights have gone the distance. But I'm expecting a stoppage here in part because Munguia is high volume. And Munguia will stand upright in fights, which is terrible against someone with a leaping left hook like Canelo has. The reason why Munguia's volume, which I mentioned just a moment ago, is important is it's going to create openings. In other words, Munguia's throwing so many punches that you're going to have shootouts. Right? Munguia is also high risk with the shots. In my favorites folder right now is the last round of his fight against Derevianchenko. Now he drops Derevianchenko on a body punch. Folks, I'm just telling you, when you're a tall guy like Munguia is for the weight class and you're bending down to hit guys with body shots, your head's unprotected. When you look at Munguia's hands, this isn't a Floyd Mayweather, George Foreman type guy, a Kenny Norton type guy. He's not hitting you in the body, but having a hand here just in case you come back with a counter. No, this guy's extremely high risk. So that 12th round against the Revianchenko, when you listen to the audio, and again, it's the, that 12th round is in my favorites folder right now. When you listen to the audio, just understand that Chris Mannix, at that stage of the fight, had Derevianchenko with a three-round lead. In other words, that fight, we forget it now, but that fight was highly competitive. Right? Mannix on the telecast is asked, what would it take Munguia to win this fight? Right? And Mannix doesn't flinch. He says, well... A couple of knockdowns. In other words, Mannix is telling you he needs, he thinks Munguia needs either a stoppage or a 10-7 round. So with that in mind, in that last round, and granted, Derevianchenko is not a blessed puncher, which Canelo is, right? Blessed puncher, blessed defensively, right? In that last round, you're going to notice Munguia is standing upright. Think about the head movement. You're not going to see much of it. Munguia is standing in front of Derevianchenko. Now, granted, he's trying to get a stoppage. But let's just say you see him and you have to think to yourself, wow, against a better opponent than Derevianchenko, this would be perilous, right? Standing up winging hooks, having your head there to get hit, throwing shots to the body, bending over the pocket. Folks, a fighter doing that is going to be in trouble against Canelo. Let's remember, too, in the Ryder fight, and I know Ryder goes the distance, right? Ryder hits the canvas in the middle of that fight. Let's be clear on that. Right? The Jamel Charlo Canelo fight. And I know Charlo goes the distance. 
He's running for most of the fight. He's running in a way that you and I know Munguia is not going to run. Right? Jamel Charlo goes down in the middle of the fight. After the fight, Charlo applauded Canelo for Canelo's power. Right? Charlo didn't claim to have slipped. He didn't claim, you know, to have fallen to the canvas on his own. No, he, he admitted Canelo caught him. Right? So Canelo is still combustible. Somehow the casino in this fight between two knockout punchers, folks, just count the knockouts, right? In this fight involving an unbeaten younger guy who might not know how to recover from adversity. Believe it or not, the casino is giving you a plus 208. Right? Even money is a plus 100. Here, I bet 10 bucks. The casino returns my 10 bucks if I win, then gives me $28. The under 10 and a half rounds, which would give you 10 full rounds and half of the 11th. The casino is daring you to take the bet because they're giving you a plus 208. Now on my video on March 4th, 2024, I said that I don't expect this fight to go the distance. I don't, right? I'm expecting a shootout. I'm expecting Canelo, who's shorter, who knows how to fight lower, to come in, take away his body because Canelo knows how to bend at the waist and then take away the hooks by having his hands up and his head down, right? So I'm expecting Canelo to be on his front foot. I'm expecting Munguia to feel threatened and to throw a lot of punches back. One of two things is going to happen. You don't even have to know who's going to win this fight. You just have to know that it doesn't go to the midway point of the 11th round. I believe one of two things is going to happen. Either Canelo is going to catch this young guy with a leaping punch. And understand, Canelo can throw straight punches when he wants. He also has that leaping left hook. You saw it against Kovalev. I have the film clip of the left hook that, for all purposes, ends the fight. Post it at gamblersadvisory.com. Just go to the bottom of the page. Right? Canelo can hit you. He has what I call ring coverage on that left hook, right? He can hit you from distance while in a crouch. I believe Munguia is there to be hit. I think the stage is going to be a little bit too intense for Munguia, who, let's face it, has recently been fighting the Derevianchenkos and John Riders of the world. Right now he's fighting future Hall of Famer Canelo. Right, so I'm expecting Canelo to be on his front foot. I'm expecting Munguia to throw a lot of punches, leave himself open for shots. Either Canelo catches him or Munguia, who is a puncher, catches Canelo. Now I need to back away here for a second and to explain to people how dangerous this bet is. And it's very dangerous. I just lost on the Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney fight, right? I did not think that fight would go the distance. Even though that fight had multiple knockdowns, it went the distance. Understand, one guy here could dominate the other. The minute the final bell sounds, you've lost the bet. If you understand the risk involved, the play I like here, because they're dangling a plus 208 in a fight that I'd be surprised if it makes it to the end of the ninth round, the bet I like is the under 10 and a half rounds. 
at a plus 208. Let me also point out too, there's not a lot of value on the Canelo side of the play. He's going off at a better than minus 500. Because I believe the difference in this fight is Canelo's elite defense compared to Munguia. Right? And because I recognize that Munguia is himself a blessed puncher. I want the first ten and a half rounds. If either guy gets to stoppage, I'm good. Right? If you want to completely take advantage of the odds. And if you want a little hedge that has built-in leverage, in addition to the under ten and a half rounds at a plus 208, Munguia right here is going off at better than 3-1. to one. I'm not saying I believe Munguia wins the fight. I don't. But at the same time, if the casino is going to give me a slugger, and if I already have the first 10 and a half rounds, and you're going to give me a plus 300, I might as well take it, especially since Canelo has faded late in some fights, the Golovkin fight, the Ryder fight, right? So I'm expecting Canelo to take care of business. I'm good because, believe it or not, this is that rare fight where both halves of the bet, <laughs> believe it or not, are paying better than a plus 200, right? In other words, you're getting leverage on both halves of the bet. So if Canelo wins by KO, inside of the first 10 and a half rounds. And let's say I bet 10 bucks on each, right? Canelo, you know, not Canelo, but the under 10 and a half with Jaime Munguia simply to win. If I bet 10 on each, just understand if there's a stoppage in the first 10 and a half rounds by anyone, right? I'm collecting 28 bucks off a $10 bet. So even with the 10 on the other half of the play, if I lose that, okay, that 28 bucks in profit drops to 18 bucks in profit. I'm still leaving the casino with some of the casino's money. If Jaime Munguia gets lucky in the first 10 and a half rounds, I'm leaving with more than that because he's going off at better than three to one. So the casino is going to give me more than $30 back in profit, right? Take away the 10 bucks. Let's say Munguia lands the big punch in the last round and a half, right? Because you already have 10 and a half rounds. You have to the midway point of the 11th. If Munguia waits till the last minute and then gets the stoppage, you're still good. Because while I lose the 10 on the under 10 and a half, I would collect more than 30 on Munguia simply to win. But I need for you to understand the risk involved. If the prohibitive favorite, Saul Alvarez, wins this fight by decision or wins the fight by stoppage in the last round and a half, you lose it all, right? Finally, let me point out a possibility. Let's say Munguia lands the Sunday punch in the first 10 and a half rounds. Understand, folks, you're then in the penthouse. You're winning both halves of the play, right? I don't see it happening, but at the same time, I'm not someone who gives gifts back to Santa, right? You're going to give me a plus 208 on an under 10 and a half in a fight featuring two punchers. Sign me up. The other half of the play, I get the guy who I don't think is going to win, but who is a blessed puncher, who is undefeated, who is going to be throwing big shots, whose real path to victory isn't to outpoint Canelo, a judge's favorite. No, it's to stop him. So you're going to give me him, and I don't even have to pick a round. I can just take him simply to win, and I get better than 3-1 to one on that half of the play in a betting setup where in a betting portfolio where I already have both guys in essence for the first 10 and a half rounds of the fight. 
I'll put that gravy on my steak. Right? Understand if Munguia gets the stoppage in the first 10 and a half rounds, you get 28 on the under on a $10 bet. You get more than 30 on the Munguia simply to win side of the ledger. So that's how I'm playing it. It's an odds play. If you just ask me, what do I think is going to happen? And I had to give you a sentence. I would say I think Canelo wins this fight by stoppage. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.